Hey everyone, and welcome to Motion Tutorials, where we go over weekly topics in motion graphics, VFX, and 3D animation. I'm your host, Sean Frangella, and in this series, we're gonna take a in-depth look at working with Adobe's new character creator app called Adobe Fuse. Now, if you haven't checked it out yet, Adobe Fuse is a brand new app that's been in development since Adobe purchased Mixamo, where you can build, customize, and assemble 3D characters and edit all the settings like their geometry, how the model's set up, clothing, and textures without getting bogged down into some of the technical details like hand rigging the character. And once you have this all set up, you can spit it out to Photoshop or other 3D apps like Cinema 4D or Maya and drop pre-built motion capture data onto your characters or hand animate it on your own. So in this four part series, we're gonna take a look at each part of this new app from the beginning and talk about what we can do in each of these sections for assemble, customize, clothing, and texture. And then once we have that set up, I have a couple other quick tutorials about taking this into Photoshop or bring it into Cinema 4D. So if you just wanna jump to how to get the 3D models into either of those programs, be sure to check out those two quick tutorials about either bringing it into Photoshop or using Mixamo's web app to download it as an FBX and bring it into Cinema 4D. So let's get started with this new app. What I'm gonna do is launch Fuse that I've added to my dock down here. And that's gonna start it up. And if you hadn't downloaded it, you can get it from the Creative Cloud updater and it would be in additional apps. So I'm in Fuse and in this first video, let's talk about assembling characters and how the interface works in general. So how we go about creating characters is starting from the head and we'll notice we have a lot of head options here. So let's just grab one of these characters. We'll get this male brute A and that's gonna drop in our head and we can move or rotate to take a look at this as it's being assembled. And as we build our character, it's gonna automatically drop us into the next room. So we could grab that matching torso if we got male brute A for torso, or if we wanted something different that didn't match, that's fine too. We could get, say this male fit zombie A, and it'll drop that in and match the texture. So you can see the scale's a little off there. We might need to do some adjusting there if we wanted to fully use this. In this case, I'm gonna go back to torso and just add that. And as we're adding these parts, if at any point we wanna just drop in all of the matching parts, we can right click on any item and click add matching parts and that would fully build out our model with all the matching parts. And if we wanted to swap anything in, we could still go to the other parts like leg and arms and mix and match parts. So let's say for the legs, we wanted to add these zombie legs and it'll match the materials, but still give us some of those little interesting zombie texture elements. And maybe we wanna do the same thing with the arms. So let's get our male fit zombie and that's gonna build up our character. Now, as we're building our character, there's a couple different ways to get started with looking at this and navigate our interface. By default, we're gonna be on this pan tool so we can pan and move our character around. If we wanna do orbit, we could get this orbit tool. And if we click outside of the model, that's gonna let us orbit. And with our mouse or scroll wheel, we can zoom in and out as well. And there's also some shortcuts for these. If we go to edit, it'll show us those. So we want to remember panning is P, rotate is R. And if we need to recenter our camera, if things get a little too off like here, we can press F for fit camera and that'll just reset us to the beginning. And after we have a model set up, there's a few different ways we can view this and take a look at how it's building this as well. Up top, we have different views. By default, it's gonna render just the materials. If we wanted to take a look at the wireframe, we could click render edges, and that's gonna show us the geometry that this model is actually being built from as it's changing live based on the edits that we're making. If we wanna see the geometry and the wireframe, we can click this button, and that's gonna show us our model and that live wireframe. Now, there's a couple different ways to check this for different lighting setups and as well. If we take a look at view, there's previous and next lighting mode by the brackets. So we can quickly shuffle through those to get different lighting views to take a look at what our character looks like. 
And one thing we can add for our overall scene is a background image plane. If we wanted to take a look at what this looks like on a background that's not just this gray, if we go to view image plane, add image plane, that's gonna open up a dialog box and we can add custom images. So I'm just gonna grab one of these textures that I have and you click open. And that's gonna drop this image plane in and give us this image plane editor. So what we can do is put this in front of or behind the character, offset it on X and Y, make it bigger, and even take the opacity down. That way we can just get a little bit of a background besides that gray to have this sitting on. And I'll just close that image plane editor out for now. Now the other things we can start to do in our assemble view is if we take a look at our arrow tool, as we grab different parts, you'll notice that these little blue highlights pop up and let's turn on wireframe. And as we move these, you can see that it's actually adjusting the wireframe and making it react so we can custom build everything without totally messing up our geometry or, or worrying or having to worry about things getting a little broken. And the cool thing is if we move any of those and jump into customize, as we're moving this, we can see it's actually moving these sliders and that gives us total control in addition to just our basic editing. So that's how to get started with setting up a model in Adobe Fuse. In the next video, we'll talk a lot about customizing our model, editing our geometry, and doing everything we can do in this customized tab. So be sure to continue on and check that one out if you wanna carry on and learn more about Adobe Fuse and the next part of setting up our model. And if you wanna to skip to any of the other topics, you can pick those by clicking on those thumbnails for customizing our model, editing the clothing and texturing it, as well as how to spit out the model into a 3D program like Cinema 4D. If you wanna get more 3D tutorials, be sure to check out the full channel at youtube.com slash Sean Frangella and subscribe. And if you wanna help out the show, you can become a supporter on Patreon at patreon.com slash Sean Frangella. And hit me up on Twitter, I'm at Sean Frangella if you wanna ask questions or request tutorials on the social media. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you at the next video. Do you like watching these tutorials and wanna see more episodes more often? You can help keep the show going by lending your support on Patreon at patreon.com slash Sean Frangella. More importantly, if you wanna throw in a couple extra bucks, you can get bonus content like project files using the tutorials, answers to direct questions, live hangouts for questions, and even request specific tutorial topics for me to use for my next video. Also be sure to subscribe to the show by clicking the subscribe button or visiting the show homepage at youtube.com slash Sean Frangella. And if you're hip with social media and have a question about this tutorial, you can find me on Twitter at Sean Frangella. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you at the next video.